name is Arvind Bagarpur. I'm a resident at the University of Texas in San Antonio. I'm working with Dr. Meredith Englander, Kenneth Mandato, Dr. Gary Siskin, and medical student Lisa Thangen at Albany Medical Center. The abstract I presented this, what I'm presenting right now here is on CCSVI. Um, we've been looking at several studies that were done out of Italy, and we're comparing those results to results of patients that we had here. Uh, the title is Venogri Findings in Patients with Multiple Sclerosis, Undergoing Evaluation for Chronic Venous Insufficiency, CCSVI, Correlation with Multiple Sclerosis Subtypes, and the patients presenting symptoms at the time of multiple sclerosis diagnosis. I have no disclosures. A little bit of background. Venous abnormalities impacting the outflow from the CNS system is thought to be what CCSVI is. Possible roles of pathogenesis, including the clinical manifestations and the progression of multiple sclerosis, are thought to be a role in CCSVI. Originally, a small series of anecdotal reports have described clinical improvements after endovascular treatment of CCSVI. Subsequently, multiple centers throughout the United States had the demand of the patients that performing CCSVI procedures. The purpose of this study was to compare the findings of venography on the internal jugular and azygous veins with clinical symptoms in patients undergoing an evaluation for CCSVI. The materials and methods, the study design was a retrospective study of all multiple sclerosis patients being evaluated at our institution for CCSVI with venography during a six-month period. The findings on venography were thus classified based on the distribution of stenosis within the internal jugular and azygous veins. These findings were compared with the presenting clinical symptoms at the time of multiple sclerosis was initially diagnosed. This study design, again, we looked at the uh, patterns of extracranial disease as done by Bartolome out of Italy. He classified these as type A, type B, type C, and type D. Type A being stenosis of the proximal azygous vein and stenosis of one internal jugular vein and an enlarged contralateral internal jugular vein. Type B was considered stenosis of the proximal azygous vein and both internal jugular veins. Type C being stenosis of both internal jugular veins with a normal azygous vein. And type D, stenosis of the proximal azygous vein with normal internal jugular veins. The classifications of venography were based on two different ways, a retrospective determination of whether or not the patient was treated. Indications for treatment included a greater than 50% stenosis, reflux, intraluminal